The retreat across New Jersey was miserable. Not only was it cold, but many of George Washington's men also did not have shoes and other necessities to survive. Washington's mighty army of 20,000 was now down to about 3,000 men directly under his control and a few thousand in separate commands around the region. The retreat stopped at a small town just across the Delaware River in eastern Pennsylvania called Bristol. Washington immediately set to work summoning reinforcements to prepare for a British attack. It was now early December. It was here in Bristol that Washington also received more bad news. Congress had fled from Philadelphia towards Baltimore and Maryland to be safe from British advances. Deserters had drained his army, and at the end of the year, many more men would leave because their enlistments were up, the exact thing that happened last year to Benedict Arnold in Canada. In 30 days, there would not be an army to fight the war. There may not even be a country to fight for anymore. A few days later, word reached Washington that General Lee had been captured while acting really dumb and that what remained of his forces would shortly arrive. Washington hoped for 4,000 men. He instead received 2,000. A lesser man would have quit under these circumstances, but that's not what George Washington did. Something needed to be done to rectify this situation and restore faith in this war. He sent out calls for reinforcements, and later in mid-December, a thousand militia from Pennsylvania arrived at his camp. He also received more veterans from the Quebec campaign. On paper, Washington had 7,500 men. In reality, he had 6,000 that could fight. The rest were sick, but he could work with 6,000. This small army was a far cry from his 20,000 strong force at the beginning of the year, but 6,000? That could still win a battle. Washington knew of a Hessian mercenary force that was occupying Trenton a few miles away. That would be his target. They were resting and preparing for Christmas time, the perfect time to attack. On December 24th, Washington gathered a war party at his headquarters. He asked them to help him draw together plans to not only cross the Delaware River, but to also attack the town of Trenton, New Jersey. The American army would cross at three points with hopes to cut off the Hessian forces from a retreat. The group set out on the evening of December 25th, or Christmas Day. That evening, a nor'easter blew in right as the crossings began, and from here on out, there would be no communication between Washington and the other two parts of this mini invasion. The other two groups were not able to continue on with the attack because of the storm, but Washington and his men pushed on. I want to take a small moment to talk about the Hessians and what they were doing at this time. Their commander, Johann Rahl, definitely knew that something was going to happen, and he had received intelligence reports from loyalists and deserters that the Americans were planning something. But there was belief amongst the British and Hessian forces that the Americans were not good fighters. I mean, seriously, they just kicked them out of New York really, really easily. So he wasn't really that intimidated. The battle that occurred was very quick, and there was brutal hand-to-hand fighting all throughout the streets. In the end, after a group of Hessian soldiers were cornered in the orchard and made to surrender, the battle was over. A small group was able to escape across the bridge that there should have been guards for, but remember, that part of Washington's attack force didn't make it across. But about 900 Hessians were captured. In terms of casualties, it was very lopsided. The Americans only received a few wounded, and the only two that died had died from exposure on the march there. The Hessians had lost 22, including Johann Rahl. This was a stunning victory for Washington and his men. Washington met back up with the rest of his forces and pushed north towards Brunswick. He then fought a series of battles against General Cornwallis at a Sun Pink Creek and Princeton. After winning these, he turned around and marched to Morristown to winter instead of pushing on deeper into New Jersey and back towards New York. In the span of just 10 days, Washington had stunned the British Army and reinvigorated the American war effort, showing that it was possible to beat the British on the field of battle. Over the course of the winter, Washington would continue to build his strength to prepare for the spring campaigns of 1777.